Pickaxe. Hello and welcome to Yomba. Hello, yes, this is Ye Old Movie Podcast, your your favourite, number one, bestest movie discussion podcast, with me, Simon the Honeydew Man, Diggy Hole Lane. And I am joined by the bitch, <laughs> G-Star Games. Hey, it's me, the bitch, the one and only, I'm that bitch, and joined... By me, with me, for me, is um <laughs> the other that bitch. Boof. Yay. It's me, Boof, also known as Sophie. Uh yeah. Welcome to Yomp. In this episode we are talking about the film Jagged Edge. Jagged Edge. This was a G-Star Games. A G-Star Games pick. Wasn't this it? was a G-Star Games pick. This was off of the back of you know, watching uh, Dead Again, and I was like, "Oh, you know, it'd be nice to get another th- mystery, yeah, another yeah, mystery thriller. thriller on the on the list. See if I can Ooh. find anything good." Um, and yeah, that's that's why I chose it. Have you seen this film before? Nope. Oh. so this was this was a brand new experience, I think, for all of us. Yes. Yes. Yes, what? I have never seen this. It's um, Jeff Bridges and Glenn Close are in it. They mm. were both nominated three times for Oscars at this point mm-hmm. when this film was made. Mm-hmm. Um, so you'd think it'd be really good, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. 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 I think it'd be great. Yeah. Directed by the fucking director of Return of the Jedi. Isn't that mental? Isn't that yes. absolutely wild? I couldn't believe it. The Welshman. Yeah. Richard Marquand. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe it. And then and then I saw there was like the, the poster on the door in the kids' room and it had Return of the Jedi. And I was like, oh, that's yeah. a cool little Easter little, egg. Yeah. Also, it's written from the, um, the, the writer of Showgirls and Basic Instinct, Joe Azertus. 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 Yes, that guy. Yes, indeed. Um, so you, so I didn't know, like, I didn't know what I was in for, mm. like erotic eroticism. Um, yeah, yeah, a bit of bit of mystery, bit of thriller. With Glenn Close, yeah, mm. <laughs> sure. What was wrong with Glenn Close? Looks like a sixty-year-old woman, just constantly, all the time, throughout her career. She just looks old. She's got a striking look about her. She's got a striking forehead. She sure does. She's a handsome woman. Yes. Um, is, is the nice way of, of well, putting it, I suppose. Well, since you mentioned it, um, I'll bring up this little fact, I guess, about how the producer... Did she have a stunt forehead? No, no. <laughs> so... Sophie! Did she get paid twice as much because she had her face to cover so much room? <laughs> Oh my god! I didn't even Jesus notice. Jesus Christ! What's going on? She had a fridge, I guess, so I couldn't really see. Um, but one of the producers was really against the casting of Glenn Close, saying she was too ugly for the part. <laughs> um, I think she was miscast. I'm going to say this on the off. I think she was horribly miscast because really, she's. I think she was three years older than Jeff Bridges, and I think it needed to be like a younger woman who was possibly like more naive. Because with Glenn Close, it doesn't really track that she would be, you know, taken in. So mm, much. No, absolute. She absolutely would. Yeah, I think so. <sighs> I think that works out. I didn't buy it. Women I are stupid, Simon. They are. That's true. They think with their vajayjays. If you put a woman on a horse, you know she's gonna. <laughs> she's gonna fall in love. She's gonna fall in love. She's gonna go <laughs> That's bed. the horse. That's with foreplay horse. right there. Yeah. Foreplay. Should we yeah. give a quick rundown yeah. of the plot? Uh, there will Please. be spoilers all the way through. Yeah. G Star, do you want to do a very quick synopsis as to what this is? Oh, God, what I can never about. do a good synopsis, but it's a movie about a 
a guy who has been accused of murdering his waifu. Uh, pretty gross uh, slaughtering at the beginning of the film. And the movie focuses on a um, on the trial of that and, and understanding if you know he's the one who actually did it. And Glenn Close is his uh, lawyer who has fallen in love with him um, in the process, which is uh, pretty strange and uh, a little unethical. <laughs> yeah. I didn't say so myself. It yeah. was a little bit unethical, and. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a wild ride because we just we don't know we don't know who killed the woman the wife we don't know, and it's yeah it's just it's a mystery it's a mystery really. I just like to say at this point that there's only one suspect until one hour and thirteen minutes into the film. They always look when at a the second <sighs> suspect appears. Yeah, yeah, they always look at the the partner first though, right? <laughs> Yeah, but it's not great for like a who done it though, is no, it? No, it's they they really <laughs> steered away from the actual mystery and focused on the stupid shitty love story as well. Yeah, yeah. It, the the love story was important because I think they were trying to showcase that he is, you know, very he's a sweet talker and he's he's lovely and you know is he manipulating her? Is he? Ooh, you know, is he like Kenny Hoodwink? Like, I don't know. I, it, it had me going. It definitely had me going because, like, I, I was convinced it was him, but obviously there were things throughout that made me go, "Ah, mm, uh, what well, uh, is it?" Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to think that anyone will watch this film and not think that it was him, given that, like, like, like I said, there's no other suspect until quite late in. Mm. And then you might question. I did question. <sighs> I, I questioned a couple of times and then I was like, right. And then it just went fucking stupid again. I was like, well, this is fucking bullshit. <laughs> like, you could have put, they could have really... I wonder, if, they, I wonder if Booth liked this film. They could have really <laughs> tried something with this film. They could have really, like, made it work. They, they yeah. could have had, a, like, a really nice Columbo-esque type thing going... I love Columbo. I should have watched Columbo instead because that's on freebie and it didn't cost me yeah. £3.49 to watch all of this it. This film kind of does look like it's it's like made for TV. It's it doesn't look great. Mm. So Yeah, every any time they were like about to, you know, give some level of like uh you know, any level, any kind of different level in terms of adding a layer into the story as to who could have done it and you know other suspects it like just gets reeled back in very quickly the pacing was absolute garbage yeah. basically right so you, you we we open up on a on a a, a Shot bit of, of a nice San Fran. yeah and that is stupid boring <laughs> and then, very boring opening isn't it it's i very was boring. almost falling asleep and i just turned the fucking movie on there's some like gentle music you know, the Golden Gate Bridge. I was interested like, oh, yes. because when it mm -hmm. started raining, right, there was a shot where it was of the beach house and it was raining and it was the sort of rain you get on the 1960s uh, and, and earlier sort of films where they don't have rain, they just sort of put it over the top of it. And it's really right. shit, right? But I liked it. I was like, okay, right, rain, and there was nice lighting in the rain through the window. And then mm. this this bloke ties a woman up, and I'm like, "Is this consensual non consent?" And then he like stabs her, like, "No." And then Mr. Krasny, the detective, I guess, is he a detective? A DA. He's a DA. DA what does yeah. a DA do? He is the district, district attorney. attorney. He's in charge of prosecuting right. people that have committed crimes, yeah. building a case against them versus the people. So they represent like the state, you know? Right. Uh, so. Um, he goes up and he feels sick, and so they offer him a cigarette because that obviously helps nausea. Mm. So this, so this woman, uh, Paige Forrester, has been tied to the bed by an intruder dressed all in black who has a a, a knife with a jagged edge. Oh, whoa! <laughs> and um, yeah, she's tied to the bed. He like rips her her PJs open. Um, she she gets murdered, and the word. Bitch is written above her in, in her own blood. Now that's important. That's an important. Little that thing. is yes. important. Yeah. Oh, also the maid is murdered as well. Yeah. 
because she was probably a bitch too. Oh my um, god! <laughs> and then the the press are asking stupid questions. At like, my god, right? They come swinging. Yeah, and then um, I just laughed because there were like no sign of sperm, so there was no sexual <laughs> assault. Yeah, uh, no sexual element to mm. it. So, and there was like nothing stolen. I think it was just like just, just straight up murder. No. Yeah. So, so this woman, Paige Forrester, she is the the granddaughter of a man who set up a, a publishing empire. Mm-hmm. She she owns like eighty percent of the shares of it, or something or other. We find out later. No, it's like twenty percent um, of eight million shares, or oh, something. Oh, right. Yeah. So yeah, so she's very wealthy. This mm-hmm. lady and her husband Jack. He. He arrives at the beach house later, is knocked unconscious by the intruder. He's got who's a leaving. comedy bandage. He does uh, when yeah. we meet him. It's it's mm. like he wears this comedy bandage for weeks. It's like I've got a head injury. Better put a bandage around my head. Yeah. Um. Uh, like, like it's so yeah. stupid. Not very convincing. You don't have that bizarre. kind of thing. And they were like, "Oh yeah, his head injury could have been self-inflicted." Like, yeah, because yeah. it, it didn't give him a concussion. It may not have even really knocked him unconscious. No. Um, I just like when... It just made him bleed. The district attorney, like the guy, Kes, what's his name? Kras- Krasny. Krasny. He's like, oh, you know, gives a fucking description on like if he was to kill his wife, that's how he would like, he would like gave a description. That's I'm how like, I'd right. do it. Yeah, he was very smug <laughs> and weird about it. I'm like, all right. <laughs> I'd cut her nipples off too. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, he he was being very strange. Uh, uh, he talks to he um he 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 scatters Paige's ashes off a boat. Where would mm. you like your ashes scattered, you guys? Oh my god, this feels like you're threatening me. Where would you like them putting? Because I'll do it. Where would you like me to bury your body? Yeah, I don't know how I feel about cremation. I don't know. I'm really weird. But like, I think d- death is just a weird thing for me because it's very morbid and whatever. Yeah. But death is very morbid. That's would you, true. Would you rather be interred in the ground, or would you like a tomb? But that's what I'm saying. Or maybe a tomb. Tomb yeah, would I think be a cool. Tomb is right? nice. Yeah. Can we have you like laying in state in like a glass coffin? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, Len- yeah. Was it Lenin? <laughs> yeah, but I don't want to be. Pre- I don't want to be preserved at all. I just want to be in a glass coffin, rotting in front of a. <laughs> God. In, in the Yogg's cast office, used as a coffee table. <laughs> I knew Biff would like request something so fucking bizarre. Taxidermy, taxidermy, taxidermy oh, her. No, yeah, we're yeah. Not taxidermy. you can stuff me, but <gasps> you can stuff me Excuse if you me? want to. I'm like, I'm arriving and to see Booth's body. I'm like, I'm crying. I'm wearing like a nice suit. <laughs> I reach into my jacket. <laughs> I reach into my jacket pocket, I pull out a single Nature's Valley bar and I place it down at your feet. I've got one here. I've got the, the maple, the Canadian maple syrup one. No, 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 Simon, you open it, you take one bite, all of it like crumbles all, into- all over the casket. Like, you know when they throw dirt on top yes. of it? Yes, yes. <laughs> ashes to ashes, jump, <laughs> dust to dust. Oats yes. to oats. Oats to oats. Oh god! Oh, fuck it then, out. Krasny, I'm gonna jump straight back into the story. Yeah, go for it. Go for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna power us through this absolute garbage bullshit film. Hell yeah! Krasny's like in, uh, interviewing Mr. Fabrizi, and I was like, yeah, Mr. Fabrizi, I love, I love your, I love your odor I know. busting. I said the air same thing. <laughs> I thought the same thing as well because he's a janitor that cleans things, and his name is Fabrizi. Well, it's mm-hmm. like that's crazy. It's like uh, it's like Mr. Sheen, right? Mm, Charlie yeah, yeah. Sheen and Martin Sheen. They could they could play oh a janitor God. really well. Do you know it was called Mr. Sheen because Mr. Estevez didn't fit on the can? <gasps> so where the hell did Fuck Sheen sake. come from? Oh my God, she's believing me. Oh yeah. no, <laughs> she's an idiot. <laughs> she's an idiot. She started games. Estevez is the real, the true name of the Sheen. Family because Emilio Estevez is actually Charlie Sheen's brother, is it? Or something like oh, that. Oh yeah. yeah, it's like that the 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 joke in what's that movie where it goes Emilio Estevez? Oh, what I is the name of the movie? Know. Oh, 
It escapes me. There's no Estevez's or Sheen's in this movie. There's Peter Coyote, though. Is there is. Yeah. Uh, I swear, is. that's a great name. I mean, at least that is. Um, and then he's got, oh, there's a knife with a jagged edge in Mr. Mr. Oh. Mr. Fuckface's, Mr. Forrester's locker. Bad news. Oh, no, he's got a jagged edge in there. Right? Um, mm-hmm. But this rich bastard does not have lawyers. He was just talking to the police, like, chill, like, whatever. He 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 later brings in like his corporate lawyers from the publishing <laughs> Genius. company. Genius! What a fucking smart move, sir. Mm. But they're like, we we got no idea. We We're got no fucking lawyers. idea. Did you notice, by the way, that when he was spreading the ashes, he he was like pretty close to Alcatraz. I don't know if you guys spotted that. Well, yeah, it's San Francisco Bay. Everywhere's so. quite close to us, Alcatraz. Yeah. I, he I got he kept his he he got ashy fingers then. He like, did. He, he went in his. He was like scooping him out with his hand. He was chucking yeah. him in, and then he was like, "Scoop it up with your bare fucking hands." What am I gonna do oh with my all God. my my wife's on my hand now? It was it, pretty. Did he just wipe it on his trousers? Do you think? It's like eh. he just has a wank. Just you oh, know, one, one last one time. For the road. <laughs> Jesus. Um. So the DA asks Jack Forrester if he owns a knife, and he says, "No, I don't." And then the DA just arrests him on the spot. Yeah, it I was very bizarre. Know. I was like, on what grounds, bro? On what grounds are you Suspected arresting him? Suspected murder. So they don't have the knife, but no. the janitor saw a knife. Yeah, but you can't. if you're going to arrest someone, you need something. You can't just say, oh, there was a knife, but we don't actually have it. I, too, have been watching lots of true crime YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I know I don't even watch true crime YouTube, but I think just over the years, common sense is like, yeah, you need something. There needs to be something. You can't just go, oh, I feel like arresting you under suspicion because um, I felt it. They have to I have some it. some evidence. Yeah, like, something. Even if it's you know, it's some. They've got to have something. Something. Uh, otherwise, he just can get out within i think it's like 24 hours but yeah, yeah they can was... only hold them for 24 hours questioning without anything going yeah. on um but no they they got him <laughs> somehow just like whatever uh, so they they they're like oh teddy this this woman glenn close she used to be a criminal was it, did she do did she do she prosecuted yeah, yeah she, was she was in the a, da's office as a prosecutor she, was she a criminal won prosecutor. every case Every mm-hmm. single case as a prosecutor working under Krasny. Yes, she worked with under Krasny, and uh, she, she she's like, you know, I don't do criminal law anymore. And I'm thinking, oh, she's got a backstory. This is going to maybe get interesting, uh, and maybe it's because she takes her kids everywhere with her. I was like, why would you bring your kids to the house of a potential like uh, to a client's house? I don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. weird. And um, Jack. Uh, Mr. Bridges immediately starts get, putting on the smoothie smooths because he's like, I remember you, you're a horse girl, you like the horses. Now, anybody <laughs> that remembers that amount of detail about a woman, right? M- men, men don't do that. <laughs> men don't mm, remember anything. Psycho. Like, if they're, if they're worth the wait, like, let them f- just forget it. Just forget about them. Anybody mm. that's like, oh, I remember you, you like horses. And then he so he takes her out and shows her a horse. Maybe this horse will convince you to pres- to be my lawyer, and maybe this horse will convince you that I did not kill my wife. And maybe if you later ride on my horse, you'll make love to me. Ooh. Riding the horse. Uh, so he goes. He takes leave from his newspaper. He works as a newspaper editor or something. And Krasny, there is a bit of a thing going on because he publishes the paper. Krasny's running for some. Political the position. Senate race, yeah, which they meant. I was trying to like keep track, and you know, it barely gets mentioned. Yeah, well, it's... they mention it, but they don't really go into detail. And I'm like, and I'm like desperately trying to, you know, pin the pieces, you know, put the pieces together, make sure I'm taking the notes, make sure I'm not missing anything. But the Senate race, I don't think really they go into. It doesn't two... matter. Yeah, it really it, doesn't it, matter. It, in the but film. basically, they're, they're trying to say that oh, you know, Krasny. Because they were running stuff on him in the paper that could make him look bad. It's yes. like, maybe he's, like he's, got, it out for he's him. got it out for him. You never know. Yeah. So Krasny then hears about Teddy representing um, Jack. Jack. And yeah. he goes and interrupts a, a dinner date. 
Yeah, which, which I thought rude. was very bizarre. Bizarre and rude. And I was thinking, oh, I bet it was him. He's been a dickhead to everybody. I bet <laughs> it was Krasny. I was trying to make this more interesting than it actually was. Uh, yeah. And then he's like, oh, yeah, remember that guy that we prosecuted? Well, he killed himself in prison. So that's anyway, the date. have a nice night. Have a nice night. So that's the, the date completely fucking ruined. Yeah, he's like, oh, Henry Styles. And all I kept thinking of was Harry Styles. And then. Yeah. Yeah. Because Harry I, is, is a nickname for Henry. Okay, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. Prince Harry, his real name is Henry. Uh, yes. 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 I can never yeah. tell if you guys are joking or <laughs> no, not. No, that's actually genuinely true. Okay, okay. Um, so she goes round. Oh, there's some there's some bullshit. She's get she's like getting a divorce from her husband or something. And yeah, yeah. The, the kids. She's got kids and. Ugh. Uh, it's like it's like oh another layer of crap to this shit cake, and <laughs> so she goes round to some guy's house called Sam. And the moment she presses his doorbell, there's like a, a honk from a boat. And I was like, that's a funny doorbell. Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> So Jesus. I don't know who Sam is. I I couldn't figure. He's just some guy. The dad. What well, at, at this no, point? At this point, or no. just in general? Like in general. Like, he's the uh, PI for the office for the district. Oh, the attorney. private guest. Oh, ransom. Data. Right. Sorry, ransom. Yeah. 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 There's, yeah, yeah. So she goes. Robert around. Lodger. Lodger. Yeah. Lodger. His name. Lodger. That's how you pronounce it? Lodger. Lodger. Not Lodger. Not Lodger. No, lodger. Mm-hmm. And so she goes around and, like, she's like, oh, Styles is dead. And he's like, well, that's why you're here then. And for, I, don't, I forgot. I forgot everything so that happened. So basically, <laughs> four, so four years ago, they, as in Ransom and Teddy, both worked for Krasny. They had a successful prosecution against Henry Styles. Who mm-hmm. went to prison? Mm. They both quit their jobs because something was dodgy about this prosecution, and they they went their separate ways and and have different jobs now. But we at this point we don't know what the fuck happened. No, we just know that it's like pretty. Just it's a Something it's sus. a soft yeah it's a, it's a touchy subject. Yeah, so she's like, she goes to Jack and says, "I'll represent you," and he he says. Oh, I'm very happy. And I'm like, no, you're supposed to be sad. Your yeah, wife in- is dead. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to mention, up until like a lot of the times that we had seen him and his interactions with anyone that he'd come into contact with about his wife, no sign of emotion. Aside from when he was like sort of throwing her ashes. But even then, it was mm. still a bit like... Ugh. Oh, really? He's not really showing that much emotion. Doesn't seem that distraught about, you know, what's transpired, um, which I thought was yeah. interesting. And um, oh, um, there's there's two lines. There's um, when Teddy is at Ransom's place, she says, "If he didn't do it, I'll get him off," which okay. I thought was quite funny because she does later on get him off, as that in is, she makes him come. That is true. That is so yeah. true. Very well true. spotted, Simon. And what was the second one? Um, oh, that's a bit later when um, when they they agree to represent Jack, and I think she was talking about I can't remember who she was talking to, but she says if you hold anything back on me, oh, she's talking to Krasny. She says if you hold anything back on me, Tom, I'll bust your ass wide open. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was very amusing as well. Yeah, um, some interest- summer child apparently got the brain mm. of a kid. Hey, I mean, we all do it. I mean, at we least I, yeah. yeah, you know, I, I can't help myself. I'm like, hee hee. That's all I said. Bust ass open. Oh, so funny. Um, so, um, I was thinking, I was trying to think. Oh, Styles was it based on circumstantial evidence? Was and Krasny just didn't like him. And so the jury found him guilty. I was thinking, ooh, I don't know. Anyway, they go around to the uh, the beach house where it all happened, which they are never mm. going to be able to sell. Mm-hmm. Not for asking price, anyway. Yeah. And he's and it, it, it like, oh, you're divorced, <laughs> aren't you? And I was thinking she was going to say, oh, does it show? <laughs> I, w- 
was oh, I God. was confused at that. I was like, how the fuck does he hello what? How did you how does he know that she's divorced? Do you think it's, do you think it's like a uh, a Sherlock Holmes thing where he sort of notices that she's got a tan but her ring finger does not oh have the tan? Oh my god, that bullshit. Yeah. Um and uh, or she's like she looks disheveled or something. Uh, yeah. This I quite like the scene when they when they go to the beach house and Jack sort of recounts discovering his wife's body because he, I believe at this point he's innocent because yeah, he's breaking yeah, yeah. down, he's in tears. And I'm like, okay, sure. I don't, th- this man's innocent. Well, the heavy breathing was a, was a, 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 like a sort of a giveaway for me in the sense that there was heavy breathing in the beginning when Paige was getting murdered and and then he started heavy breathing and it went into his first person perspective as he was recounting and, you know, talking to right. Teddy about what had happened. So I'm like, oh, that's a bit weird. And then the same music started playing as well. So I didn't Ooh. know if that was like a, you know, like a, a red herring, whatever it's called, like, you know, trying to, trying to say it's similar, but like, mm, could it still be him? Is it, oh, are they just trying to trick us? But yeah, I thought that was odd. And then he got very mm. emotional and very, he started like hyperventilating and put on a good show. <laughs> yeah, very he did. a good show. Yeah. But then they, they go for a nice walk on the beach and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, yes. Um, and he, he says that he's, he's never had kids and he never cheated on his wife. <laughs> Apart from yeah. a, a series of one night stands, which that's not a thing. I said, it's not a. S- uh, you, you can have a series of one night stands with different people, but not yeah. with the same so just, person. All, well, the same French lady, apparently. Yeah. He um, said, he said, oh, aside from like a series of one night stands, I'm like, that's still an affair, my guy. That is still an affair. Like, well, that doesn't really count. It's just a series of one night stands with a French lady. She was very hot. I should mm. call her. I'm single now. <laughs> <laughs> like, and um, she, uh, she's like, oh, was, was. She- Page um, faithful, faithful, and he was like, "As far as I yeah. know." And she's like, well, "What does that mean?" Yeah, and, that the, mean? and he's like, "What? Well, what it's? What it's? What I say it? Like, what?" I was like, "What do you mean? What does that mean?" It, <laughs> should have said, "Bitch." Should I stutter? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell! Oh, I was shouldn't like, call her a bitch. No, that's, Ooh, no. that's the that's the, word. that's the word. That's the word. Ooh. So, d- d- is that the point when they they have a little kiss? Is that that bit? I don't think, I don't so. think so. No, that's that's far. Not yet. That's, that's oh no, that's after later. the horsey hijinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's yeah, got to yeah. be horses first because foreplay. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah. So she she meets back up with Sam Robert Lodger, and there's a really really good cat drawing behind her. She's taken her kids' drawings to work <laughs> with her, and uh, it's a beautiful black cat drawing. And I oh. love him. And um, I love him. She's smoking. They're both having a Budweiser. Uh, <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay, big, big mood there. Um, and I've kind of tuned out a little bit. Jack has passed a polygraph, right, like, mm-hmm. with flying colours. Yes, um, completely aced it. Yeah, but polygraphs are bullshit, so this doesn't count for anything really. Um, well, it's because you can keep yourself if you really wanted to, or if you really if try. You've seen the, I guess. If you've seen the movie Equilibrium. Starring Christian Bale, yeah. which is a much better movie than this. <laughs> wow! Um, then you'll then you'll realise that it's easy to 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 pass the polygraph. It's um, all there's based also a psychologist. On, like, sympathetic responses. So if you can control those particular aspects, what's like, the heart rate? Blood, right? Yeah. Yeah. Keep blood pressure and it's like sweating. Did you um, kill your wife? No. Did you Did you write the word bitch on on the wall of your wife? dead body mm. did your you wife look at beach? your wife's dead body did you get hard and if there's like any you know reaction to certain things then you'll be like hmm this is suspicious yeah like if the if the graph goes you know starts yeah, like but going it's up completely and down. unreliable it's totally unreliable well, yeah, and some people are life. psychopaths and they can well, make- no not because of that but because like the, the readings just don't actually bear much response to well, no, how people react it- well, People's he, heartbeats don't magically just go up when they tell a lie. You uh, know? Yes, they that's do. That's not how it works. Yes, they do. No, that's not how it works. If you lie enough, you can train your body to not... Yeah, but exactly, Boof. You can, like, if depending on how you're built, you can train yourself into, like, keeping calm 
in those certain situations. But, you know, in a stressful situation, my heart goes like through the roof. Uh, yeah, but you're not you. That's anxiety. That's. that's... Hmm. I guess. And also, that's pretty normal. Like, the, that's why another reason why they're really unreliable. You can fail it just from being. Nervous. Uh, nervous. Yeah, nervous. you can have yeah. false negatives very easily. Yeah. Well, I guess they gotta worse. they gotta do everything in their power to at least tick the boxes, I suppose. But yeah, it was a yeah. very interesting conversation with the guy who ran the polygraph test and saying, you know, oh, he passed with flying colors. Um, but I feel like you know he he's pretty sus. The people that run polygraph tests, they're they're trained to they're trained in body language as well. Correct, so not, which is yeah. also bullshit. Yeah. Why? Okay. You th- you, there's a really good Mooncat video about this that you need to need to watch, and then you'll be like, "Oh my god, it is all complete horseshit." Well, there's yeah, also but- I also heard recently that there's no such thing as a poker face. There's no such thing as poker face. There's no such thing as like having one. But, but that's a Lady Gaga song. I've listened to it. I've heard it. It's real. Uh, poker face. Bow bow bow. But yeah, I've heard, I guess this is like myth, this is like a Mythbusters thing, right? Yeah. You know, whether or not. I wonder if they did an episode on that. That is a good I've been watching it because it's just been on telly. It's kind of relaxing. Me too! (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god, you and your bananas in pyjamas. I've been watching, I watched an episode recently where they, you know, the the saying, know, know it like the back of your hand. Yeah. And then they got pe- and then they got people and they took pictures of their hands and they put them in a room and they're like, Oh, can you spot your hand? And most people could. Yeah. That's I can spot cool. my hand. Wow. Not my hand. Yeah. I love this. Yeah, this is this is my hand just here. Oh. Oh god, there's another one. There's two of them. <laughs> now there's two of them. This is getting out of hand. Um, so, so yeah. Yeah, there's the polygraph. There's also a psychologist who says that he he doesn't think Jack could have done it. He seems like a normal, well adjusted man. Krasny has handed over 832 pages of discovery documents yes. to the defense. So they have to go through. So this is all the witnesses that they're going to call, all the evidence they found, everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this has just been in two months. Apparently two months has gone by now. Yes. Just a surprise to me. Uh, I wasn't that surprised. I was like, okay, they're moving it along, I guess. They're, they're doing their discovery. They're building a case. You know, it's not going to yeah, happen but, overnight, right? But it, yeah. it's, it felt like it had because literally nothing had changed. There was there was nothing indicating in the in the story in the script other than her saying it took him two months. <laughs> like, People should have true. they should have changed their haircuts or something. Yeah, done, true, <laughs> true. But there was also a weird inconsistency scene where she, in her opening case on the first day, in the courtroom, was wearing one suit and then changed to a different suit. Did she soil her first suit? I don't know. It was so weird. I was like, Did she shit her pants? Maybe she did. Oh. She shit her pencil skirt. But I was like, <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have had cheese. <laughs> oh, no. She has IBS. Lactose intolerant. Oh. I'm sorry. Um, so Jack and Teddy have a, have a romantic candlelit dinner of Chinese takeout. They drink wine. Teddy says that Paige told her friend Virginia that she was going to divorce Jack. And Jack calls Virginia a bitch in this Mm -hmm. scene, which I was like, wait a minute. Wait a second. He said the B word. He said the B word. Also, I thought that 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 dinner was a bit like, it was a little too intimate for my liking. That's when I started to get like weird feelings. I'm like, hmm. I mean, they're having a dinner, but they're, you know, there's candles, but she's also taking notes. So it's still kind of like a client dinner, I you guess. You can tell that that's something that he was like, she, oh, she's coming around. I'm going to put, I'm going to dim the lights. I'm going to put some candles. I'm going to put some smooth mood music on. And she's going to turn up and she's like, yeah, we're just going to take some notes. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. My, my electricity's out. And I've got all this Chinese takeaway. And I just, I, I can't finish it all on my own. Mm. <laughs> I thought it was very sus and that view and the balcony and I'm like oh god he's really pulling out all the stops here but yeah that's when it started to feel like 
inappropriate, unprofessional territory uh, for yeah. me. I think it, it felt it felt unprofessional when he was like, he was just going like smiling at, oh yeah, the one that likes horses. Mm. I, I was like, I fucking like, I know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, it's very sus, very sus indeed. Uh, Teddy visits the the janitor who discovered the the now missing knife the that knife. was in the locker room of the yeah. clubhouse that everyone went to. Every single person in this fucking movie has been to this clubhouse. Even I've been to that there. clubhouse. Yeah. Mm. Who's a member? I'm a member. Mm-hmm. And she's like, can you be sure that this is Mr. Forrester's locker? And he's like, well, it was in this one, and then I put it together that it was Mr. Forrester's. Which um, is a little bit suspicious. It's a little bit um, sus. Like, that, there's nothing that's, that's... It's not got his name written on the knife, which you should always write your name on the knife just yeah. you know in case yeah, you lose yeah. it on every single possession you own have, a label, have maker. A, lab- a label maker and yeah. just put your mm. name on everything yeah and your address and your phone number yes, yes. So i put that i've got my my house key in case i ever lose my house key i've got my my name and my address that's on really it. useful actually so people can post it to me. <laughs> um, don't do that do not do that do not, do not do that. That's a terrible idea. It's a terrible I idea. It's a joke. I can't see why it's a terrible idea. It's a, a genius idea. <laughs> yeah. So she, she's like trying to say, well, you know, there's no way that you could have known for certain, surely. And he's like, but I know. It's stupid. It's bullshit. Yeah. The, 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 everything is hinging on that knife, basically, at the moment. Yeah, yeah. That's all they yeah. really have. Um do they do the horsey hijinks now? No, no, no. Uh, Teddy and Krasny meet the judge, and she she tells the judge that Krasny has a habit of holding back evidence. Oh, which is quite important. I um, thought that was so brave. I mean, obviously, we didn't have all the facts at that point, but yeah, making a claim like that is very serious. Like, because you and based- the judge is like. The judge is like, okay, name name a case when he's done that, and she yeah. doesn't want to say the Styles case. Yeah, yeah. She, she doesn't. She uh, doesn't say anything at all, and well, he's just, like, yeah, hmm. I wanted you to get thrown off this before it even started. So yeah. we were. She bottles it basically. She bottles it. So she's not that brave. Well, really. I Gee. well I n- no, I I didn't I meant it in like a sarcastic way because I'm just like you can't. Like make us such a claim like that about another another lawyer saying that they you know withhold evidence basically. But you don't have any evidence that he's evidence, withholding evidence. Exactly. I was like, oh, like don't <laughs> don't bring it up if you're not going to follow through, you numpty. She's a numpty. Yeah. She's a mega numpty. Yeah. Then we get the horses. The horses. The is horsey next. hijinks. Yeah. So basically, he takes her out riding, and he's like, oh, come on, you can do this magic jump and. He's like, no, I don't think I will be able to magic jump. Uh, and she does the jump. I'm just a girl. And th- then they have a kiss after. <gasps> because her is her is her is she out of gas or something? And, and well, he she's was going like, to take her home, I think. Yeah. Right? She left the lights on. She left the lights on and her battery died. The battery of a car God, died. Such an idiot. Which is weird because she turned up in idiot. the daytime. Like, why mm. would her lights be on? Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't make much sense. Uh, she, but she's obviously a dit because she's like, uh, you, you can take me home. And then they have a little kiss. And I'm thinking, that's not on. You don't do that to your... A, you don't do it to your lawyer. B, you don't do it to your client. It's, yeah. You can't do it because I'll, your lawyer I'll, will get disbarred. Mm-hmm. And and um, your case, basically, it's like you're manipulating the Yeah. And you could representation. tell... When when we get to the part when shit hits the fan, you could see it on her face. Like I have felt that what what she was going through in that instance, I was like, oh my god, like that is such an awful feeling. How is she supposed to like look him in the eye and like continue and act like you know do her job in this moment? It was very yeah, not, not a pleasant feeling. Um, no, it was a it was a it was a moment, and I was thinking, fuck's sake. I don't know. I I was women like, are stupid. <laughs> they are, but like you know, I mean, okay, not that they. Okay, no, scratch but that. Also, he's very rich because of his dead wife. 
I true. I and was handsome. like, this is not professional. Um, the guy's wife has been dead for like two months or so at this point. Yeah, and he's you know he's been he's been smoothing her. Over. He might have killed her, and he might have killed her, <laughs> but he has been smoothing her over from like the moment he met her. Surely he's been that's weird, her like a fiddle. Yeah, but surely that's weird, right? Like his wife has been dead for like less than two months, and he's been like making the moves, being real smooth, taking a horseback riding. That should like that's red flags. It like is definitely sh- red flags because people are even sadder for longer when their dog dies. Yeah, like, if man. your wife dies, you'd be really cut up for ages. He was still at work. He was yeah. going to work, and he took leave until the case was over. So he yeah. obviously wasn't that fucking upset that his wife's like, dead. If anyone, if anyone listening, like if you've ever experienced a death, like somebody close to you, like you will know how fucked up it is. Like you don't just recover. No. Like that quickly. Like he was like, yeah, oh, no pro- oh, horseback riding, yeah, like romantic dinner is like, no. So that that was like the first what the fuck red flag. You know, yes. this guy is just just trying to manipulate her, really. But I, I don't know. I had my like suspicions about him like from pretty early on, anyway. Uh, and I, yeah. I assume you guys did too. So, well, I mean, again, there, there's no other suspect at this point. So, yeah, it's. The focus is firmly on him. Well, they never though. even asked him, like, oh, does, does, did you know of her having any enemies? Anyone who wished could have wished her any harm? Nothing like that. It was just, yeah, partner straight away. Which, yes, you you sort of have to look at the partner, because that is the most, I guess, logical first step, because it's like they're the, they're the person who's closest to them. Right, and and she was like the owner of a publishing empire. Yeah, and, and he when was you're married, it, everything exactly. And when you're married, uh, you know, mm. I guess if there's a prenup, whatever. But you know, in this case, so if you plan on if you plan on murdering a wife, best course of action is to murder her before you get married. Um, well, no, way, then, he, then he wouldn't get anything. Oh yeah, good yeah. point. M- uh, marry her first. Murder on the wedding uh, day. Yeah, murder her on the wedding day. Like night. in The yeah. Simpsons, where yeah. Sideshow Bob marries Selma. Yeah! Oh, is. God. And it's Isn't very, she gay? Y- yeah, she figures out she's gay. Okay. Uh, wait, I, I, maybe it's Patty that's gay. Oh, my God. Yeah, Let I us know remember. in the comments. Um, but yeah, he tries to kill her. But he, like... Because he wants to like get back at Bart, because he's always trying to get back at Bart. Yeah. Um, yeah, and she can't. She doesn't have a sense of smell, so he fills the room with gas. Because <laughs> she's been smoking she likes for years. Ci- yeah, she lights a cigarette. <laughs> and uh... anyway, uh, yeah. I, sorry, the film. I was yeah. writing down at this point. I kind of want to watch Tron. <gasps> with Jeff Bridges. With Jeff oh, Bridges. Yeah. I love Tron. Same I era, love- much better film. Um, I even like the uh, Tron Legacy. I thought that was pretty I good. I love Tron Legacy. I don't like, you I like seen Punk, it. though, so... True! Banging soundtrack. It's pretty yeah. good. It's pretty and good. I wrote I down like at this it. point, I bet Jack did do it, actually, and he's manipulating Teddy and she feels even worse. Like, I'd figured mm. it out at that point that it was like... Yeah. Okay. Um... What? Also, was anyone else Greek. confused, or was it just me? Because they were like, I couldn't figure out what his name was. Because I don't think they'd like said it, but I think they said like John and then Jack. And I'm like, wait, is his name John or is it fucking Jack? Well, is John Jack is, or is it- Jack. Yeah. Jack is a nickname for John. Anyway, I figured, yeah, I figured that like out eventually. Harry and Henry. Like Harry and Henry, but yeah. also yeah. they just refer to him as Mister Forrester quite a lot. Well, um, they did, yeah. So when they eventually started dropping his first name, they kept like swapping between John and Jack. And I'm like, have I like, am I mishearing? But I then I remembered John F. Kennedy was also like they used to call him Jack on occasion too. So I'm like, oh wait, maybe it's just the nickname thing. But I thought so, it was bizarre because they're not on a friendly basis. So you'd just no. be calling him fucking John, right? So yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think if somebody says, my name is Jack, hello, you refer to them as Jack. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't be going, yeah, you wouldn't be de- deviating to the nicknames right off the bat. Yeah. But yeah, bizarre. Okay. 
do we get to it right i don't i kind of stopped taking notes at quite a lot of the points because right. i was i was bored well he took um, her home and then he, he was kisses in her, her yeah the kiss her son comes downstairs and sees her kissing a man who isn't his daddy yes um and then i write in my notes what does she see in him <laughs> he's a handsome man no, I think I think Jeff Bridges is very handsome. He's a handsome, handsome man, and after a divorce, women and men may feel quite undesirable, mm -hmm. uh, like they're over the hill. You know, she's had two kids. You know, it's yeah. nice to feel desired, of and uh, it's very easy to fall into that trap, especially if he's a handsome and rich man. He will, and he, I mean, you True. know, potentially a murderer, but he's still handsome. You know, and women love danger. <laughs> oh, they do. <laughs> they a little bit of danger. It just oh. reminds me of that <laughs> that goggle box clip. Oh, you know, women love a bit of a bad boy, and they're like, "Yeah, I'm not a bloody terrorist." Please. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't know if you guys oh have god. seen it. It's such a classic no. clip. Oh, Jesus. It's, it's good. It's good. But yeah, the kid catches them smooching. He's not. And he's not too he, happy about it. So the kid then tells the dad, basically, mm. and the dad mm. phones her in her office. And the dad is not bothered at all. He's like, um, yeah, uh, our son David, he saw you kissing another man. He's a little bit upset. I'll have a man-to-man -man discussion with him. And that was it. And I was well, like, that, oh, that's okay, nice. pretty that's, sure. That's how you have a, a very nice amicable yeah. split. You know, That was a very nice conversation, wasn't that's it? That's an adult it, thing to do. Yeah. yeah you don't like try that. and turn, turn your kids against one or the other parent. You know, if yeah. he had called her a bitch, I just would have gone, "Oh my <gasps> god!" Oh my god, it was him. <laughs> oh. Um, Teddy receives a letter. They've been receiving these strange letters. Um, and it's they call it a prank letter, I think. Yeah, I and laughed at that. <laughs> I was like, "Prank letter." Lameo. Is it the, one of those where it, where they open it up and there's a butterfly that flies out because it's like a <laughs> yeah. book you go, ah! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, a it's, a, it's a prank, and they put talcum powder in it, so it looks like anthrax, and they have to shut the whole building oh, down. Oh God, Jesus, that's not a prank. <laughs> prank, <bro>. dear. <laughs> I gotcha. <laughs> the letter says he is innocent, Santa Cruz, and the T's are slightly raised. Ransom has analysed a previous letter, and apparently it was typed on a 1942 Corona typewriter. I didn't even. And how to could... me, I was like, "This is like the first big clue of the fucking film." Yeah, they've actually, yeah. They've actually like done something in the story here. Yeah. Like, how how could they? Because I, I don't know. You guys might not know this, but I just thought, like, how could they figure out the type and the model of the typewriter in how this letter was? I don't they have a whole bunch of typewriters that type out sample text, and then they compare it, and then they're like, "Oh, yeah, this 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 is the Corona, I guess. the nineteen forty two one specifically. Mm. Also, it's black. I don't know how we know, but it's a black typewriter. Maybe maybe because maybe they had different typing that. styles. Yeah. So mm. I have a light. It's like an eggshell blue typewriter. Mm. Um, it's fucking. Garbage. <laughs> oh, why? I got it. I got it from like a car boot or like a a charity shop or something. You gotta heavy. start taking your fucking film notes using that typewriter. I, I should, but it get obviously it's a typewriter. So if you type too fast, the keys get stuck together. Uh, yeah. They're so heavy, it hurts my fingers to yeah. type because yeah, I'm not yeah. trained in that. The ink mm -hmm. ribbon isn't very good anymore. You have to learn what combinations of letters you can type quickly in succession. Yes. Because some of them won't stick together, but some of them will. And that's kind of the where the, the QWERTY keyboard came from, uh, everybody, because it's like the most common letters are sort of spaced out. So it was basically like the, the majority of They're divided of between typing. your left and your right hand. Yes. The so common letters. They wouldn't get stuck together uh, as easily. Fact. Fact. A boofy Unsubscribe. fact. Unsubscribe. Stop! Stop typing! <laughs> the first typewriter was actually made out of bits of twigs and uh, spit. Gee, that's actually true. That that's is actually true. Okay, 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 good. Not yeah, that up. I thought she was making it up. Okay, we need a safe word. So the word. tease. We need a the safe tease. word. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake! The tease are slightly raised. That's another important thing. They are slightly raised. I the like that. The tease are slightly raised. I really like that little. The little tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was very cool. Ransom is—he's a real bro to Teddy. 
they're good friends, and he's calling out her relationship, her inappropriate relationship. And he says, you know, he wants you to like him, figures the more you like him, the harder your work to beat the rap against him. And she's like, yeah, I know, I know. I'm a grown woman. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I, I wrote, um, I love that he, like, dresses like a proper detective. He's a real dick. Because he, like, wears... I love him. Uh, yeah, he's great. My he's favorite got, character, Ransom. He's really good. He's got the hat. He's got the, the trench coat, you know. He's, he's got he the Budweiser. The he's got, got the, 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 you know, the <laughs> drinking problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, he had, like, whiskey when she first goes to his house, and then he, like, pulls out the fucking beer. I'm like, okay. You see him open his fridge, and it's, like, full of beer. Yeah, what a chat. It's like any single man, yeah. yeah. Well, detective trope, right? You know, just drinking. Drinking, drinking, drinking to forget all the atrocities they've witnessed in their life. Oh, God. Especially in San Francisco, you know. Oh, God, the things they must see just on an everyday basis in the streets. Exactly. Homeless Um, men masturbating (laughs) everywhere. (laughs) So there's a mention. It's um, it's Teddy and Jack at this point again, somewhere or other. And... um, they mentioned racquetball, and he's like, he plays racquetball every day. And I was like, what is racquetball? Is that the same as squash? And yeah, it's squash. it is almost yeah. the same. There's slightly different rules, and scoring is a bit different. But oh, yeah, it's pretty okay. much squash. Have you played it before? It's very uh, it's very scary. <laughs> it's very That's quick. That's why they have to there's wear a, a, goggles, because yeah. you can lose your eyes. This ball, the very hard ball, is coming at you fast. Yeah, so. and it hurts when it hits. Ball. Like, it's... You better hit it, yeah, rather than let it hit you. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I noticed um, he was. Uh, I don't know if this was before, or after the racquetball. I just thought the racquetball was such a fucking like random. What the fuck is the scene again? Why are we watching them bond? I don't really give a shit because um, they fuck. They do fuck after, yeah. Getting that's... sweaty, getting yeah. sweaty with with somebody is it's a it's a known way. That's why people fall in love at the gym all the time because there's a lot of endorphins involved, and you associate. Is it just because it's like hot, fit people just all hanging out? That's yeah. a sensory fucking hell for me. If I was like talking to someone, I'm sweating and they're sweating. I'd be, I'd, I'd, my brain would be having a meltdown. Oh yeah, mine too. Like yeah. if if anybody invited me to go to the gym or play racquetball on a date, I'd be like, Are you fucking look at me. Yeah. Just look at me, this doughy little puddle of shit. Yeah. It's not going to be able to stand up, let alone swing a racket around. Well, some people are like into, you know, I guess doing the fitness things. And yeah. then, you know, I it's thought like you were going to say, I, I thought you were going to say, some people are into, you know, doughy little pieces of shit. <laughs> no. I'm sure no. some people are. Gonna... Some, some, no. Somehow, somewhere, I will find my, my Jack Forrester. Oh, I vacuumed, God. I vacuumed I don't just before this to. podcast and I, I was losing vision while it was happening. I was Aww. like, oh, fuck it out. No, I, ju- I just, I just meant that some people, like what I find grim or gross in a social setting or like a date setting, so that's someone's idea of a fucking amazing date. You yeah. know, just going yeah. and going on a hike and sweating and, ooh, you know, get those... There's juices pumping, and I'm like, nah, bro, Ugh. I'm good. <laughs> I don't want to. I'm good. I don't want to sweat. Just like I, I think that's why we str- we struggle dating in general, <laughs> the G, <laughs> because we just hate things that people want to do. I'm just like, nah, I'll probably just stay in. To be honest, yeah, I'm good. I'm stay at home. So, have you ever heard of the game Overwatch? Let's do that instead. <laughs> no, Let's do that. No. Let's play Overwatch. Let's play Overwatch instead. Oh, that's a good idea. Can we? Talk about the sex scene. Yeah. Yeah. How arousing did you find this sex scene between Glenn Close and Jeff Bridges? I didn't. I was watching this with my friend and we were both like, <coughs> um, oh, this is weird. <laughs> don't, uh, don't know I was watching this alone and I was feeling awkward. God. Yeah. <laughs> the cat was giving me very judgmental looks. <laughs> Father, what are you watching? Father. You sick fuck. 
I just, oh, God. I just thought. It, I mean, I was more grossed out by when they you can gone almost see. Je- you can almost see Glenn Close's side boob, but not you, quite. Yeah, almost. I looked. I looked for it. Yeah, I bet you did. Um, I wanted to send a picture in your <laughs> group chat <laughs> of her tits, but I couldn't. I couldn't. I um I thought it was so gross when they got back from the racquetball uh, game and he just they were like kissing but they were so sweaty and they were just rubbing sweat all over each other but like obviously you sweat during Ugh. you sweat during sex so it's like whatever you know what? you're gonna get yeah oh not, not if you're doing it right <laughs> well yeah <laughs> I tend to have a, <laughs> I tend to have a lot of fans on because oh, <laughs> she she's um. She does sweat during sex only because she's a never nude and she's fully dressed when she's, she does She's it. got a jumper on. <laughs> no, no. She's got a hoodie. No, no. I, lava. I tend to put like, I like having fans on during, you know, because I don't want to sweat. I just want to feel the cool breeze, you know. Stay nice and cool. Oh. I don't want to feel sweat. That's gross. <clears throat> okay, well, moving on. Um, Teddy <laughs> suggests that Jack asks, he acts chivalrous in court, carries her things for her, uh, presumably to show that he respects women and, yeah. and authority. Mm-hmm. And, Very clever. Uh, mm-hmm. And also she wants him to wear a, a blue suit because juries like blue suits. She doesn't go into this anymore. Just like, what? Yeah, I, I kind of wanted a bit of an explanation what? on that, but sure, let's let's not elaborate. We just on assume that. she knows. She knows her stuff. Well, she Personally, obviously I does. Think but wearing a black suit because he's still in mourning for his wife. Yes, but like, that's well, it was that a dark be- blue. It wasn't. So. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. like. Yeah, it wasn't that out there. But I was like, okay, odd. But I noticed he was still wearing his wedding ring because like, when he was in bed with her. Um, oh, oh. When he had his hand Ugh. behind his head, I, I spotted the wedding ring on his on his finger. So oh, I thought God. that was thought that was interesting. Yikes. Yeah, yeah. So we have our first day in court. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a bit of a media circus, but not like a massive one. Yeah, there's like as many extras as they could afford. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Presumably. Uh, so Krasny is doing his speech to the jury as the uh, the leader of the prosecution. He basically states there's a divorce that was on the horizon and clearly Jack murdered his wife. Um, and Teddy, she just stands up. She says, Jack is innocent. He did not kill his wife. And she just sits down. She yeah. barely says anything. And I'm like, what? Drops okay, the mic, sure. walks away. And we're like, okay, sure. Whatever sure. you say. Whatever's, whatever. The first witness is Paige's brother. And, she, and he talks about like the business and basically... She was rich. (laughs) She had all these shares in the business, blah, blah. Very boring. Um, He says Jack was great at his job as an an editor at the newspaper. Well, the important thing thing was Paige was contemplating divorce. Um, Paige owned 20% of the 8 million in shares. And Jack only had, he had less than 1%. Yeah. So that, that and he inherits everything. Yeah, so yeah. That, that that was the important takeaway from from all that. But the brother didn't I found seem it very boring. Well, I did and didn't because I knew this was, you know, this is when we were gonna start getting the facts from people around yeah. them in their lives about you know motivations and premeditation and if you know if and if he did do it and whatever. Um. But the yeah. more interesting witness is Virginia. Virginia Howell. Afterwards, yeah. The fucking uh, this, fur this... coat wench. Yeah, yeah. this is where she, she was like, oh, yeah, Paige was, she said she was going to get a divorce. Mm-hmm. And then the cross the cross examination when, when Teddy was like, is it true that you just didn't, she cut whole contact with you? You know, did, you didn't see each other. And she was like, well, we talked on the phone. She's like, when was the last time you saw her at her house? And she's like, six months ago. And then it was, it's like, it emerges that she was sending notes to Jack saying, come and meet me. Mm-hmm. Um, Stop avoiding me. Come and meet me. You know, come and hang silly. out. Yeah. You know. Um, and she signs, she signs off Ginny. the letter with, Paige will never know. Paige will never Love know. Ginny. Love Jenny. Love yeah. Jenny. And she's Ooh. like, but he took it straight to his wife, and that's when she cut her off. So yeah. I was thinking, oh, maybe Virginia may have 
um, killed Paige to get Jack to herself. Yeah. So now we're actually getting some other suspects yeah. in a little way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's like basically that. I didn't think end. that for one millisecond. <laughs> I was did not I was trying even to remotely think, suspect think her. Maybe. I mean, the fact that we hadn't seen anything of Any anybody other. else. Yeah. Anybody else. You were else. desperate. You were just desperate to find someone that oh, might I have liked, fucking done it. I liked it. I was like, oh, finally, we're getting, you know, maybe another suspect. Make this a bit more interesting, you know? Was it her that um, says that he used to bring people round to ride the horses as horses was was his yeah. method of foreplay. No. No. It was somebody that said that. That was that's a bit later. So this is yeah. this is a, this is slightly a little bit later. But See, this is, found... this is what happens when I don't fuck. I t- I stop taking notes because I'm just like, Bleh. it's fine. <laughs> don't worry. I yeah. like I, I I take notes like as I'm watching. I have to like pause and I'm like, oh, you know, write out my yeah. notes and I got four pages of notes yeah. I took for this. Me so. too. Mm-hmm. Me too. Um, I thought it was uh, very rich that uh, Teddy had the nerve to claim that Krasny is withholding, you know, pieces of evidence and stuff submitted for discovery and all this kind of shit, but then pulls out the fucking letter from Virginia and it's mm. the first that they're hearing of it. I found that interesting. True. And I'm like, okay, True. so you say that he hold, withholds information and evidence, but you pull, because when, when they were like, oh, here's a letter. And I'm like, okay, yeah. Mate, it's a I nice- guess the rules are different for the defense. I don't really know. No, anything that is, you know, brought forward to the judge, to the jury, has to be submitted in discovery. They, they all have to have all the facts. You can't just go, zing, look at this letter, unless it's like a literal last minute submission that came out of yeah, nowhere which we, which we yeah. do get yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but yeah i thought that was ironic to say the so least it was a great first day of the trial um teddy teddy's son david is upset with her because you know she was Wait, kissing this man sorry sorry just going back because that virginia woman was lying at every turn right what happens when you lie under oath like that it's perjury so she's going to get... Nothing's going to happen to her, realistically. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well... But it would be perjury, so... Yeah. So yeah. Can, they, can they, like, find somebody? If... Yeah, if do you get fined? If, you, if, you're... if they're committing perjury, what happens? Like, what's she the penalty? She goes to prison for 70 years. Oh, That's good. not true! Oh. That's not true. They come round her house and they just they just trash the place, smash her TV. Because you know the judge like, always. Hope you learned your lesson. They always make like a note of saying, "Oh, just a reminder, you're still under oath. Don't lie. That's perjury." But yeah, she just she lies through her teeth the whole time, up until the very end when she says one truth. But she still fucking perjured herself that whole testimony. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so, so Teddy's back at home, it's night, she's working on the case, taking notes, her son is upset with her, because he saw her kissing a man that wasn't her, his daddy, and, and he, he wants her to, to do, to help him with his homework, and she says, David, I've got a trial tomorrow, and he says, I've got a test tomorrow, which I found hilarious. Yeah, kids. And are absolutely hilarious. As though that's more important than someone's life. Your <laughs> shitty little test. Yeah, he doesn't give a shit. Because Kids I, don't I think know I, these things. It's, it's fine. They do and they don't. Because that kid was like, I hope he's guilty. I hope he's found guilty. Ki- I hope he loses. And I was like, damn, kid, what the fuck? Stone like, you want, your, you want your mum to be, like, associating with someone who killed <laughs> another woman? Okay. Um, we then get the um, ransom is reveals that there's a tennis pro called Slade who works at the club, and they think that he's going to be called as a witness because he was researching him, and the guy's just sort of disappeared, and they think that he's been talking to the prosecution. Um, and then it's the day of the the second day, maybe of the trial. I We're back so. in court. Yeah. And there's a surprise reluctant witness that's called for the prosecution. And I was like, oh, here he comes. This is Slade, the tennis pro. And it's not. 
It's it's Eileen Avery. Mm-hmm. Um who reveals that she had a six month affair with Jack two years ago. Mm-hmm. But he lied. He lied to Teddy. Ooh. Bitch. Pretty bad. Yeah, and a Teddy was she wasn't not a French happy. lady. This is a different woman. This is a different one. Mm-hmm. She couldn't look him in the eye. She couldn't even look in his direction. She was miffed. She was heartbroken. She was pissed. But she uh, still kind of kept her composure a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Um, Eileen says Jack wanted to divorce his wife, but he could never do so as he would lose everything. Yes. Mm, very Teddy, Teddy doesn't ask any questions. Just lets that sit. What, what good would it do to ask any questions? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're just going to make it worse. And then this is when we get Slade for the first time. Um, our tennis pro is in the stand. He reveals that he, he's been having an ongoing affair with Paige right up to when she died. God knows when this started, um, but it's Who, been this, a long time. This Bobby, what's his name? Slade. Yeah, Bobby Slade. Slade. Bobby Slade. Uh, he says that Paige knew that Jack was having an affair. And he would take his lover horse riding as foreplay. As foreplay. There it is. Yeah. There it is. The hole just kept getting deeper and deeper. Glenn Close's fucking face mm-hmm. when he says this is a real. It's a picture. It's a real picture because he did that to her. Yeah. yeah. I would feel. I would have felt like such an idiot. Like honestly, she yeah. she portrayed the feeling very well. Like. That, yeah. that moment That's of... called acting. She's great at it. She is. She really is. Fucking amazing at it. And if you think that's bad enough, um, Slade then says that Paige told him Jack really knows how to like use people and manipulate them mm-hmm. to get what he wants. And then and Teddy's just sat there just fucked, just <laughs> unhappy. The prosecution are basically at this point just ready to like high five each other and hug. They think they've got this in the bag. The the weird thing about all of this discovery is that it seemed like Jack and Paige had an open relationship in a weird well, way. Well, they that's knew what that it was. Think, the, they knew mm. that one another was was cheating. Well, yeah, yeah. it's not really open, is it? They were no. both cheating. <laughs> that's what it is. Right, right. <laughs> But it just seemed like it was. It was it, that's how it like was sort of spelling it out. But then obviously it reeled it back in a little bit to say like, no, they were just, you know, clearly just cheating on one another. And we're somewhere outside in San Francisco and Teddy confronts Jack that he's just been playing her. He, she wants to drop the case and he just fucking grabs her and he says, I didn't kill my wife. And then she says that she doesn't believe him, and then she just drives off. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. You should have stayed with it. Yeah. Um, um, Teddy visits the judge. Which was very, at his house. very stupid. Honestly, to do. what she is she do fucking that. doing? She makes a series of the worst decisions. Yeah. <laughs> just, like, she's not fit to be a lawyer. Like she has stage. a current Awful. active case with this judge and presents him with a quote unquote hypothetical case and client to avoid implication. And he's obviously, you know, not a moron and wasn't born yesterday. Um, as she's like telling him about what's going on in this hypothetical case. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's weird. It's really weird and unprofessional. Very weird. But and he has an amazing view of San Francisco from his like study, li- like drawing room, whatever fucking room they're in. Yeah. Um. Probably amazing his, room. Probably his office study or whatever. Because he's beautiful. A, he's a judge. He's a judge. So he gets to have a, a nice house with a lovely view. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um. Oh, also, uh, ransom has received another letter, not a ransom letter. Um, he was received letter. another letter, f- yeah, from the corona, but we don't see what it says. Um, but it's good, I've got to drop that in. Yeah, that they yeah, received yeah. another letter. Yeah. Then we get the greatest 
fucking line of the movie. Um, Ransom is going round. He goes round to Teddy's house. She sat there with the lights off at the top of the stairs. He walks in, he climbs up the stairs, and he says, What the fuck are you doing sitting in the dark? You playing with yourself? Yeah. I was like, God damn, dude. <laughs> Fucking like, like reel what? it in a little. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, he he looked like, like genuinely concerned. Couldn't believe it. Yeah. He was yeah. he was concerned and confused. He's like, Why the fuck are you sitting in the dark? Are you playing with yourself? What's going on? Hilarious. Fucking hell, love him. Yeah, he's got no filter. He's just so done with everything. He's, and he's just he's he's there to tell Teddy that he's got some dirt on Slade. He's found something out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we don't know what it is at that point because they just sort of get more information and then do like a slam dunk in the in the court the next day. We are. In court again, Slade is on the stand. The defense have called him to ask him some questions. Of course. Um, apparently the letters from the Corona typewriter have actually uh, been helpful. And maybe. Um, and it's revealed, they've discovered that Slade was acting as a gigolo. Um, he wasn't Good just for a him. pro. Good for a him. Pro- he wasn't just a pro tennis player. He was a pro stitute. St- st- that doesn't really work. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It absolutely works. Fantastic. Women paid him that for one. sex. Oh. Women paid him for sex. Um, foreplay, backhand, um, one from the back, two on the front. I don't know. I don't know any tennis terms. I'm going to be honest. He scored an ace. No, that doesn't work. Um, hang on. All uh, love, love? Yeah. yeah. There's no love involved here. It's just pure animal <laughs> fucking. <laughs> well, she was like, "Oh, you were selling sexual favors," and he's like, "Oh, she's a beautiful woman. She doesn't need to pay for sex." So yeah, apparently, um, Paige didn't pay him, but he 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 was having sex with her, and then Teddy asked Slade if he ever tied her up. To which he responds with, you fucking bitch. Yeah, which I thought was... He says the magic word, bitch. He says the magic word, and I was like, oh, of course, it was him. Because... Finally. Mm. Finally, we've got a real second suspect. Yeah. I was... One I was, hour, 13 minutes into the film. I was actually getting a little bit... Um, like, Horny. Oh, yeah, I was getting a little bit turned on at this stage. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but he worked at the club, so he had access to the lockers... <laughs> As True. well, mm. um, and there's Miss. The, they showed Mr. Bendix. It was Mr. Bendix. Mr. Dwayne Bendix. What a good name, right? Mr. Bendix. Uh, has the locker? What was it? Two two two? Is it one two two or something like that? It was either Perfect. one two two or so, two one one. Or okay, so Fabrizi is on the stand. The defense have got nothing to ask him. He just states. They found a hunting knife in locker 122. Then Dwayne Bendix is a club member. He's on the stand and he's a hunter and he had a hunting knife in his locker. And he says it was a hunting knife with a six inch blade and a jagged, jagged edge. edge. He says the name of the movie. Bow, bow, bow. Says, the name, says the name of the movie. And apparently his locker was. Two two two, not one two two. Mm. It's like a row away, but in the same sort of location, right? Yeah. So it could be very easy for the janitor to mistake it. Um and even the janitor seems confused and angry and and he swears at people. Um he's well, kind of lost it at this point. He's not lost not it. He's just sort of like, oh, he you know. He comes across confused and unreliable as a witness now. Well, because he was he right? was very, you know, set on where he found it and what it looked like. It was in new condition. And she's like, is this in new condition? It's got like scratches and stuff on it. So she was like, you know, you're trying to get him to admit that there is a there is reasonable doubt. That it could yeah. very well not have been the same locker and not the same knife or something like that. Yeah. Um, 
then we get Slade approaching Teddy as she's leaving in an underground car park. Mm. And he threatens her and he says weird shit. He says something like, I could warm you up. I bet I could make you real hot. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, what the fuck, man? What is your problem? (laughs) He comes across like a fucking psycho. Yeah. So at this point, I'm like, yeah, it's him. He did it. He did it. And I was thinking at this stage, oh, he he could go after her kids. Like... Oh Jesus! It be, it would be a proper red dragon thing though. I did watch Manhunter after this because I was oh like, "Oh my god, that's a good film." That's uh, a good palate cleanser. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking, oh, this could it could actually like ramp up quite a bit if you if you did it right. Um, there they was need a couple like of a aspects. blind chemist in it as well. Was, it, was she a blind chemist? <laughs> yeah, she was a like yeah she was she worked in the photography lab um, with him. Oh God. Uh. And uh, I liked, there was a line that Krasny said, he's he's worse than a psychopath, he's an Iceman. I, no, I didn't understand what the fuck like, he was I was like, about. right, okay, Iceman, it's, it's worse than a psychopath, I get it. <laughs> I didn't understand a word of what they were saying. And I was thinking, there. do you mean Val Kilmer from Top Gun? Yes. <laughs> worse than a psychopath is Val Kilmer. <laughs> um, so they, fi- they finally read the note the the prank letter from the corona we get to, and it's we get to see it it says he is innocent santa cruz january 21st 1984 ask julie jensen mm. um the defense called julie as a witness and this is a fucking horrible this is awful yeah. this is awful yeah she she woke up one night and a man was in her bedroom, dressed all in black, with a ski mask on. He was holding a knife to her throat. He tied her hands and legs to the bed, cut her nightgown off of her, Blech. cut cut around her nipple, oh. smeared the knife with blood, and wrote bitch on the wall. Oh. And then, this is the worst detail, he put the knife between her legs, but didn't cut her with it. But she says, but he didn't cut me with it which implies that he did something else mm. so and that's just uh, uh, uh. Jesus Christ this happened 18 months before the beach house murders Paige Forrester and her maid yeah 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 Whole 18 months beforehand I had like phantom pain when she was like like telling that oh the Metal Gear Solid yeah, yeah, not not yeah. not not the term, you know, the Metal Gear Solid. I can still feel my arm. Yeah. Why are we still here? Uh, just yeah, to suffer. I just I was wincing at the the details, yeah. but obviously the everything that she had been retelling was you know what we saw happened to Julie, um, but she got to you know live to tell the tale. He just stopped and then yeah yeah same thing happened to Paige. The same thing happened, and to Paige. apparently. Apparently, she told Krasny's assistant yeah. all about this, and he visited her twice, um, including after the Beach House killings. And said he mm-hmm. had nothing to do with it. Ooh. Which is so bad. Like, what do you mean? It's exactly also, the she same. Played, she played tennis at the same club that everyone went to. Um, she played <laughs> it with Slade. So yep. she knew Slade. Huh. Interesting, Weird. interesting. Mm. Mm. So now we're in the chambers of the judge and everything just goes crazy. Yeah. Krasny is, he's like, how did, how, did, how could you discover this? He says to Teddy, we pulled the police report of the crime. He says this in front of the judge. Yeah, In literally. front of the fucking judge. Yeah. And the judge is like, oh, I'm going to uh, despise you, you fucker. Yeah. <laughs> But Krasny is convinced that Jack set this up, that he attacked the woman 18 months ago in order mm. to set up Slade as the killer of his wife mm-hmm. so that he would get away with it. Yes. And I'm like, do you know what? I believe that. I believe that. Sure. Yeah. It, it, he, it, it's like, it's such an unbelievable thing to happen, though. You're thinking, oh, you know. It's it obviously like something out of a movie. Yeah. No, it's obviously Bobby. <laughs> Obviously. Like, Obviously. I just like when the judge was like, oh, you got you got something to say to me, Teddy. You got, got something yeah. you want to <laughs> get off your chest, Teddy? And she's like, nope. I ain't got nothing to say. And then just continues. I'm like, oh, okay. 
so that's it. The the court case is done. The jury, the jury yeah, they don't find him guilty. They go to um, deliberation. They find him not guilty, um, which is very nice for him. Um, and obviously, she takes this opportunity, right? Uh, instead of instead of going like, I'm very happy for my client. You know, it's been a very difficult time for him. And I'm just glad that he's been exonerated. Um, she goes, uh, Krasny's a fucking piece of shit. She, she's like making it all about her. She was like, here's the yeah. story. And there's the there's the wife or the mother of Henry Styles in the courtroom watching yeah. as she says, Krasny withheld uh, important evidence. This yep. man killed himself. That, that could have exonerated him. Yeah. That, so and that piece of evidence could have exonerated him, which is so bad. So basically she's she's gone and shat all over Krasny's career as well. Probably rightly so, you know. Yes. That's that's, yes. that's not a nice thing. But the fact that she just she makes it all about that instead as well. She so does, they go, yeah. They go back to um Well at this what, before we continue to that, at this point hmm. we're like, okay, so you know, they find him not guilty, but like you know, if if he didn't kill his wife, then who did? Well, they, well they, Slade, obviously. Yeah, they, so they put out an, um, a warrant for him to find uh-huh, him. That you hear uh-huh. it on the telly that, uh-huh. that he's he's got a warrant out for his arrest oh, in I didn't connection that. with the 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 beach house killings. Yeah. Gotcha. Teddy goes. Teddy goes home. Her family's there. They're like, "Oh, you did great. Yeah, yeah, you won. Yeah, yeah." And then they all just leave the room so she can watch TV. And see and see that there's um yeah like an APB out for Slade. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh-huh. Um. And it, 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 husband and kids are like, "Oh, we're gonna leave you to celebrate." She's like, "Well, I've already I celebrate with who? I want to celebrate with you guys." And Bye! then and they've gone. They're they've off. They've gone. Pizza. And then Jack is there, and they have a little schmooze and shit, and they go back to Jack's place, and obviously have a good, have a right good time. Have, about have a nice fuck. fucking. Yeah, they had a real good time because she doesn't wake up till half three in the afternoon. Yeah, and so uh, they were at it all night. Yeah, and she, she they had such a good time that she has to put the sheets into wash. I thought that was so fucking bizarre. I was like, why the fuck is she changing the sheets? It's only polite. It's only but polite. If you she, get your cum she all over it. All over yeah. it <laughs> Maybe she's, she's maybe like, she well, is a squirter. Yeah. But you'll never guess what she finds in the closet where she puts the where she puts the dirty sheets. I'll never guess. Is it a is it a nineteen forty two Corona typewriter? It's a black <gasps> one as well. And she no sees it, and, and and her stomach drops, and you could see the realization kicking in. So she gets it, and she gets the little bit of paper, and she starts typing it out, and I'm she sorry, gets to the. Did she tea. not? Sorry to cut you off. Did she not think it was weird that there was a drawer full of blank paper that was perfectly everyone, fitted for everyone a Everyone has that in their bedside cabinet. What? Cabinet. Everyone's got that. But like that was Just like some... a dead giveaway for me because I'm like, because she knew exactly what that paper was. So I'm like, are you are you for real? <laughs> like, well, she has to double check that the, the you know the typewriter. It's like you, you can put pieces together on the way. Typewriter. Uh oh. It's a paper. Uh oh. Well, right. no, she now, knew where that paper was because she opened that second drawer first. Yeah. She wasn't even like because it's a movie and she needed to type something, so she needed a piece of paper. Yeah, yeah, so but she you know what why. I'm saying. She, though, right? she knew where the paper was. Yeah, immediately. But like, if she had known beforehand, which it seemed like she did, that there was a drawer, a second drawer full of paper. I think that you're was... thinking too much into this. Yeah, particular you're definitely point. thinking too much. Did oh. you think she did it? At no, this point? no, no, no. She. <laughs> She knew that there was a drawer full of paper that would fit perfectly in a typewriter. Yeah, she it's a movie. Second- typewriters yeah. are, are still a thing in this era. Like a lot of people 80s. had yeah. typewriters, and a lot okay. of people had desk desks with the bits of paper in the drawer. Like yeah, if I had to, like if write I had down to, the number and stuff. Yeah, yeah. If I didn't have a PC and a printer. I mean, I still have a drawer with printer paper in it. But mm. That's crazy. 
I don't have any drawers under my... Oh, I do have drawers under my desk, but it's a very cheap oh little, little uh, bedside cabinet from Amazon that doesn't work. What's in there? Tell us what's in I've there. I've got some... Well, it's all my, my makeup palettes, my hairbrush, and then on the top drawer, I've got bits of jewellery and hair accessories. I was expecting something weird. That's There's nothing weird in that one. Disappointed. Yeah. I thought, I thought you were going to say, oh, I've got a doll's head. No, um, that's in the bedroom. <laughs> a taxidermied mouse I just keep in there. The bottom drawer <laughs> you know, in my bedside cabinet has all my medication in it. And the top drawer has various Tamagotchis, uh, phone yeah. cases. Of course. You know, it's got some Those chocolate. are the kind of toys that you keep in the bedroom. Tamagotchis. Yeah, those are the kind of toys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she, she types it out. She types, P is innocent and the T in innocent is slightly raised. Dun, dun, dun. So she fucking shits her pants, and so she has to put them into wash too. Um, yeah. And she grabs it, she bundles it up in a coat, and she puts it in a car, and Jack is off at the horse's stables at the moment, and she's like, I've got to go, because David's got a fever. and he's, Her son, uh, yeah, David. Yeah, her son, yeah. David. And she's trying to start the car, and it doesn't fucking work, and I'm thinking... She left her lights on again. Yeah, fucking, fucking stupid bitch. stupid bitch. Oh flat. my God. Um, and he's, she, she, he says, oh, I'll give it a go. And I'm thinking, the, the, the typewriter's on the, on the seat next to her. Yeah. He's going to see it. Um, I'm thinking well, that he's, done, he's sabotaged the, the... Yeah, it's only slightly covered, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. thinking he's sabotaged the car in some way so that she'll stay. Um, but no, uh, he gets it started. She doesn't want to kiss him goodbye. She drives off very fast. Very fast, <laughs> like Jesus. And he's obviously thinking, right, she's on to me because yeah, he's a little he sus. He's a little sus at that point. She and starts then... boozing it up in the kitchen as she's home. Um, or no, she has a shower no, and she, she yeah, cries. Let's, let's oh, she not, yeah, she rubs a bar of soap on her head a lot. Let's not forget how she like runs home, smacks it on the staircase, rips open her shirt like titties. You know they're bouncing. She spent all night. Making love to this man who is clearly the murderer. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah. fed her the information she needed to prove him innocent. Mm -hmm, yes. Mm -hmm. um, in case you didn't pick up on that. Listener. I did! What do you mean? Did, I just, did you just not hear me say listener? Oh. Yeah. Sorry. I thought you were talking to me because <laughs> I'm like... Trying to explain how she like ran up the stairs and she's just like fucking tits out, ripped open sh her shirt, ripped all the buttons off. But she Can was you like, "Stop talking about Glenn Close's tits." You're the one what who tried to get a screenshot of her side boob. Okay? That's true. I did. Thank you very I did much. Try. <laughs> I did try. Oh. Yeah, close but no cigar. But yeah, she goes in the shower, you know, scrubs that bar of soap everywhere very aggressively, wants the all the filth off. She feels dirty. Um, he calls her after, like a little bit after, being like, yo, is he How's okay? David? How's and David? And she's like, he's fine. Well, and it, what are you talking about? Oh, right. Yeah, my son. Right. Yeah. Sorry, that oh, story well, my I made fucking up. son. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 no, he's fine. Uh, you said he had a fever. And she's just, she just hangs up. And no, then, no, no, no. He, she says, I found the typewriter. Oh, yes. And he's like, what are you talking about? Oh, what yeah, typewriter? Yeah. I don't have a typewriter. I love you. And she's... Yeah, he says he's coming right over. That's quite important. Yeah. He says, I love you. I'm coming right over. You just stay there. Oh, did um, I don't even remember him saying that. And yeah. does, she, does she phone Sam or does Sam phone her? She, she phones, phones, yeah, Sam. Ransom. Yeah. yeah. And... Um, she, he can tell something's off. He's like, "Do you want me to come over?" And she's like, "No." Um, but yeah. But she's like almost crying as she's saying that. But then she, and I'm sure, he picks up something's up. Well, because she's yeah. like, oh, "I've got something to tell you." <gasps> I've got something to <gasps> and she's like hyperventilating, and she like is about to fucking break down, and then suddenly she just stops. Very, yeah. very sudden, and she, and I'm she like, can't bring herself to tell him. Mm. Which I thought was but some she's reason. fucked Bizarre. up again. Yeah, like that she keeps fucking up. She and is... we find we find out why she didn't want to tell him. Um, but she didn't want him there when she did what she did. Like, yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. I think because you think that she's gonna hang herself too. She's gonna kill herself too. Oh I, Jesus! I thought that too. I didn't think that. I thought. Yeah. I, didn't I thought. Think that. I thought. My yeah. God! I fucked up. 
Well, because not only has she got let this killer get away with it, and she's like obviously like bitched about Krasny as well. She's also like got the police out after an innocent man. She's mm. potentially ruining his life as well. Well, I mean, he's you know he's not a shining like example of a great people no women but, pay him to have sex g yeah but he also really in a dark secluded car park went up to her yeah, car okay, threateningly and said yeah. "Ooh, i could warm you up and called her a fucking bitch so you know maybe you didn't murder anyone yet but the guy... <laughs> a matter of time. It's, it's just, just a matter a, of time. It's just a matter right. of time. Okay. So don't feel too bad about little Bobby Slade. Uh, but yeah, she's ruined a couple <laughs> a couple things at this point. So then um, uh, an intruder gets into the house. Um, Smashes a window in dressed, the door. Dressed the same way as the person yeah. from the beginning of the and, film. And uh, walks up the stairs past the typewriter. Got a knife. He's got, got a knife. knife in He's his got hand. a knife with a jagged edge. Uh. <gasps> um, oh. and, 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 and she's Fucking in bed, up. and she's looking very sad. She's looking very sad, and she's she like, doesn't look surprised no. to see the intruder. She's like, "I want to see your face, Jack." And he's he's thinking he he doesn't do anything. He pulls out the rope, I think, as well. But her hand yeah. is sort of under the sheet a bit. So I'm he, like, oh, she's got a gun. She's totally he's got a, a gun. He's about. He grabs her legs, grabs her feet. G Star Games, Pog. and that's when she pulls the fucking gun out and just blows him away. Just yeah, I, I didn't know away. what the fuck her game plan was because I just you know went up and he saw it goes in the first person perspective. She's in bed, looking very de- you know defeated, and I'm like, what's what's the game plan here? Are you just gonna? I think she maybe she felt so guilty she wanted to be killed. Nah, she had the gun in bed, so she did have the gun yeah. in bed. So I think that she yeah, was waiting I... for him and she knew what he was going to try and do. That was the plan to to kill him. That's the yeah. He's already been found innocent, so I guess double jeopardy. Yeah, he would not be found. You can't you can't the try somebody for the same crime twice or something. So she had to take justice into her own gun. Mm-hmm. Yep. Hands. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, then um, Ransom arrives just in time, sees him on the floor. Uh, he's definitely dead, 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 dead. And um, takes and the mask off. And then we off. get the, f- the final twist of the movie. Takes the mask off, and it isn't Jack. Only no, kidding. It is, it is, it is absolutely Jack. Jack. It yeah, would have been really Jack. funny and clever if it would was have been Bobby. amazing. If it was just literally anyone else. Yeah. Anyone. It, it could have been the woman. It could have been Bobby. I was thinking, like, right, that would have been but it's a great. the fucking prime suspect all along. Of yeah. course. It was. They, they didn't do anything. And Ransom gives the, the incredible final line of the movie, Simon. Fuck him. He was trash. There you go. Like, like she the didn't end. like fuck him. <laughs> the end. He like he didn't just like she didn't just murder somebody. She didn't get him off like and do all this stuff and then get so- she another got guy him. in trouble. She got him off, all right? Yeah. Uh, and she didn't times. just get another guy in trouble for two fucking murders and ruin her own life. Mm. Fuck him. He was trash. He was, tra- he was, he was trash. trash. But also, you are <laughs> trash too. Literally. You what bitch. are you doing here? Lying in bed. You're touching yourself. <laughs> yeah. Lying in the, sitting in the dark. Are you playing with yourself? <sighs> and that's, the, oh uh, that's the end of the movie. Holy shit. It was Jack okay, all along. final final thoughts, G Star Games. Uh yeah, pretty Your pick. Okay movie. It's nothing special. It's just a very um it just felt like a what is it like a killer instinct slash what is it no is it killer instinct or the one with uh, michael douglas and basic instinct that's basic instinct but then there's the other one yeah. that's similar ish it just feels there's mm. instinct isn't that just is that the what's the anthony hopkins one uh is that the one you're thinking of possibly it just feels like that sort of you know that, that sort of type of movie, um, like the one with like Harrison Ford and um, 
what's her name? Michelle Pfeiffer, what lies beneath the surface sort of vibe. Um, you know, husband and wife ordeal. What lies beneath. Yeah, what lies yeah, beneath. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's it's okay. It's it doesn't quite live up to those types of titles, uh, sadly. Um yeah, the the story was a bit all over the place. It didn't go the full mile when it needed to, when it came to like the other suspects, even though I was still trying to guess, obviously, who it was who killed, you know, these women. So it still did an okay job at that. Um, yeah, I would give it a five, I want to say. I think it's a five, five for me. Ten. Five out of ten. That's yeah, that's average. It's yeah. a pretty it's an average film. It's not bad. It's not great. It's okay. Hey, fair enough. Fair enough. Boof. Um Ugh. This is a <laughs> stupid person's film. This is a stupid person's like thriller. Mm-hmm. Because it it's not doesn't intelligent. do anything. Yeah. This is, this is, all right, I wrote down, story, four out of ten. Bit twisty turny, but not enough momentum in the right places. But mm-hmm. it did keep me guessing a little bit. In, yes. In, but only for a moment, for a second. Mm-hmm. It was like, ah, but did you reconsider this? Well, no, you don't need to. Acting, six out of ten. Good acting, hampered by story. Emotionally, did not give a shit. About any of them. Did not mm-hmm. care. Did not care a <laughs> second. Aesthetic, two out of ten. Bland. There was a couple of good stings of music in there. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, fun fact. The guy from uh, the James Bond scores. Yeah, John Barry. Isn't I love that... John Barry's stuff. There's a couple yeah. of really fucking Jeez. good tracks in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah. that stuff. But no, this was boring. This was yeah. really bland. And it all went downhill from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Like, there was just nothing going on. There was a couple of camera angles that made me feel a bit dizzy as well. Like, okay. they were too swingy. Uh, like, right at the beginning. Uh, the, pe- the first Did person. Pers- yeah. The, yeah. No, it was, it was like when all the police were there and it was all very hectic and crowded because it was like, oh, uh, yeah. it's a very just- hectic time. And it was just like, no, fuck off, it's bollocks. <laughs> mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Length, 8 out of 10. Thank God it wasn't any longer because there was oh, just God. nothing going on. I like how a high score is for a short film. Well, yeah, if it's a bad film, then mm. I don't want to, I want to get through it faster. It felt like they were just filling it out for, for the, there, was, there was a vague story that somebody wanted to do mm. and then they just tried to make it twisty turny. But then somebody was like, no, that's a bit too clever. We don't want to scare people off. Could you dumb it down a bit? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so final score, three out of ten. I just don't care. It wasn't oh. worth, it wasn't worth three pound forty nine. Mm-hmm. Rental price. Oh I, that's that's kind of high, like three forty nine for yeah for that kind of. Ugh. It was well, it was absolute shite, and I will never watch it again. In fact, it's you know it's it's not as bad as Heat because I was so bored in Heat, um, but Heat was really long as well. Yeah, um, yeah. But I felt the same yeah. kind of anger in places. I was playing a game on my phone for bits of it instead of taking notes. It, it, you know, I don't blame you. It I was don't blame just you. Fucking garbage, and mm-hmm. you know, I'm amazed Damn. that it it is. I'm amazed it's still around. <laughs> you know, it's one of those ones that should be forgotten. What about you, Simon? Blimey, um, I I thought <sighs> it's a pretty uninteresting film. Um, I was expecting, like, best case scenario, it'd be like an Agatha Christie style whodunit courtroom drama, and it was not that, really. Mm. Um, The fact that there just wasn't, like, a real second suspect for so long, like, that's terrible. That was terrible. Um, Not establishing that someone else may have done it. Uh, there wasn't real... I didn't feel like there were any real twists and turns. There was obviously Discovers the Typewriter and, and stuff, but, you know, I was expecting something like that to come along. Um, it's fairly predictable. Mm-hmm. It it felt like it was shot like a TV movie of the week. Everything just looked pretty unimaginative, dull. 
no like beautiful shots of anything at all at any point really um and the acting wasn't like stellar considering who was involved um but i did love robert lodger i thought he was absolutely fantastic lines that he came out with were fucking gold um so that redeemed it somewhat um I, in a couple of weeks' time, I'm going to barely remember anything in this movie. It's just going to be absolutely forgotten, lost. This is just—it's um, just such a forgettable thing. The mid film, yeah. yeah, it's not it's a standout mid. at all. Well, my rating was three out of ten. Mm-hmm. Um, which, yeah, that's bad. That's the same Booth gave it, right? Yeah, three, three out of ten. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, G Star Games, but this was. I, I not really a, not don't a have that much of an, an attachment to this film. You don't need to apologize. I just was looking for something of this in the same vein of what we had obviously experienced with Dead Again. And that is the whole point of this podcast to look at films that we may have seen, may not have seen, films of that same genre. Yep. In the same vein of like the the basic instincts or whatever those other films were of the time that were successful and the films that tried to copy that same sort of formula, um, and you know were they successful at it? And obviously this, this is like the case that over wasn't ten years before. What uh, well, this was Basic Instinct? Yeah, this was like way before really? Basic Instinct. It's Basic Instinct more yeah. in the nineties. Oh, that's nineteen ninety two. What am I thinking of then? Is it Killer Instinct or? There's a film Instinct with Anthony Hopkins. That might be the one I'm thinking. I don't know. I'm thinking of some. There's. I read <laughs> somewhere that there. It was like it stemmed from a bunch of those types of similar films that had done really well at the time, and you know there was a there was a couple that were trying to like sort of replicate that sort of similar formula. But anyway, the point is, it's always interesting to see these kinds of films, what they do with the formula, can they pull it off? And this one just obviously fell very, very short. It's a very, very average, below average-ish kind of film. And that's fine. Yeah. Not all of them can be winners. I will take the L. Take yeah, the L. Take that L. Okay, trivia time. So quite... <sighs> it's interesting because that the last reveal of the killer's face... Um, when Glenn Close has shot him. Um, apparently there's urban an urban legend mm-hmm. that there was an alternate ending where mm-hmm. the identity is someone else. Mm-hmm. But apparently that's not true. They did yeah. refilm it to add some extra frames so that the audience could tell that it was actually Jack under the mask. Yeah. In the original release, the unmasked killer's face was shown for 18 frames, less than a second. Bloody mm-hmm. hell. How is, that even, how is that even like a decent thing to do in film, to have... Yeah, when you're building up to, you know, when it, when it <laughs> all revolves. Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, it's bizarre. So I swear this, thing, this film was made by just stupid people. It was made by the man who directed Return of the Jedi. So Which is make mental. Make that what you will. Yeah. Um, so this was, um, who was it? Gene Siskel, famous for being um, in the other half of Siskel and uh, Ebert. He wrote an article saying, who is the Jagged Edge killer? He said that in the five weeks since the movie's released... The newspaper that he wrote for received over a hundred telephone calls from confused movie goers, uh, sorry, movie goers, asking for clarification on who the killer was. Because it was less than a second, a lot of people who watched the film didn't fucking see who the killer was. They blinked and they missed it. That's so fucking funny. Absolutely absurd. Absolutely absurd. Um, a lot of people thought. That the killer was actually Bobby Slade. Yeah. Um, but other people thought it might have been the locker room guy, Febrizi, the uh, the district attorney, Krasny, or even the fucking judge. Some people thought that that was the judge. 
What? I can't. I like the judge what? looks so much like older <laughs> and what? Do you know what it would have been good? It would have been good if they they'd had so many different um like possibilities that it left it super open ended, and then they could have like different endings depending on cinema, like when they do that different oh. different endings on different releases. Yeah. Oh, no, oh they just—they were just, just too fuck fucking people. stupid. Mm-hmm. I hate this film even more now. <laughs> oh my god! I'm lowering my score to two out of ten. Oh Jesus! Okay, I'm gonna have to open the uh, the document. Yeah. Because um, okay. uh, this is just enraging me Booth to know this. Two. Okay, there we go. Um, so what else was there? Oh, the um, G Star Games mentioned the. Return of the Jedi poster that's in the kid's bedroom. Mm-hmm. Um, if anyone has uh, Googled this film to maybe watch it for the podcast, you would have seen a Google resu- result for the R&B group, Jagged Edge. <laughs> they named themselves after the film. Why? So, yeah. Which is- for that sweet SEO. <laughs> I don't know. Why? So bizarre. I- a strange decision. Um, I didn't look up why. Um, yeah, I didn't look up why. I was like, okay, on choice at this point. Uh, I thought it was. Yeah. Uh, so the the original screenplay, which I thought was like a little better than Jagged Edge, I don't know. Uh, it was originally called Hearts of Fire. Columbia Pictures disliked the title, and they decided it just had to be changed. Uh, they, it's a shit title. What, Hearts <laughs> it's pretty of Fire? bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It makes why? me think it's a war movie. No, you're just thinking of like a love story during war. Mm. You know, I don't know. I kind of liked it, but they gave it to a a secretary in the studio to go through the script to come up with another another title. And she'd obviously seen the description of the jagged edge, a, a knife with the jag on the edge, whatever. And uh, the, the, they did not name their na- They did not <laughs> name themselves after the fucking movie. The name Jagged Edge is derived from the song Snakes by rapper Old Dirty Bastard's debut album Return to the 36 Chambers, a dirty version. So that's bullshit. So the trivia trivia for that was bullshit. More specifically, the beginning of RZA's verse, which states Jagged Edge, Rockhead God, Heart of Stonehenge. So it was actually Old Dirty Bastard. Can someone edit that on Wiki, or not Wikipedia, on IMDb, on IMDb trivia to remove that? That, had, that was bullshit. That had a, g- a good amount of upvotes as well. I guess we were it, it was just a bunch of people like because us. Because people don't, yeah, don't we didn't fact check these the trivia. Yeah, but Booth did. Booth I did. just did. I Thanks, was Booth. very interested. I was like, why the you. fuck, right? Would this American R and B group from Atlanta, Georgia, go? You know what? That film, that film with Glenn Close. Fucking love, it. <laughs> love it love it so much <laughs> love it oh my no god we should, we should make we should make a rap group guys I mean, it sounds oh it sounds hard though right <laughs> jagged edge sounds sounds cool. yeah big, that's why like old dirty bastards debut album return to 36 chambers but you know it was a song on that it's mm. it's a good it's a good word you know it's yeah. a good couple I of words but this so this film's got eighty one percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Apparently, Rotten Can you Tomatoes makes that? no sense to me, and it never will. <clears throat> I, I will never understand it. It's an it's an enigma. It doesn't mean that the average rating is eighty one percent. It's important to note that it means that eighty one percent of the reviews were positive. Yeah, I just um, don't. I just don't get Rotten Tomatoes. It doesn't. It never has ever made sense to me, which is why I never look at it ever. Well, there we go. Um. According to Variety, the film's two leads uh, were triple Oscar nominees at the time of the film. I think I already said that. Yeah. They yeah. also wanted uh, Jane Fonda for the leading lady. And I oh think my God. Michael Douglas. And ironically, which is what makes sense now that you say it, um, he didn't want to do like a thriller role, a thriller movie at that time. Well, Lamau. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's fine because it was just not thrilling in any way. It was like, do I get to wear a really sort of tatty fucking jumper in a club? And they were like, no, that's not in the script. And he's like, I'm out. I'm out. And then Basic Instinct came along. Mm. And he gets to wear a horrible shitty jumper in a club. I think what a film. Because like, this film came out and everybody was like, there was just nothing else going on for people. 
So mm. I found this. There's but a the, lot the, of these the kinds actors, of actors. The actors were the only good thing. They were Redeeming. the only draw. Yeah. yeah. It's fucking mm, they shit. They weren't even that great in it. Yeah. I, I like them. I thought they were okay. Um, they they kind of like Jeff Bridges' character in the second half of the film doesn't really get shown a whole bunch. She is the main focus for a lot of it. Um, yeah. But yeah, after the revelation that he'd like sort of been fucking around and withholding information, he doesn't doesn't get like a shitload of lines. Um, in the box office, so the budget was oh, fif- I, I did have one. Oh. I did have one last bit of trivia. This is crazy. This film's been remade twice in India. Huh? There's, um, what is it called? Antima Gatta mm-hmm. in 1987. And then they made a Bollywood version, which presumably is a musical, mm-hmm. um, in 2001. It's called Kasur. Right. But, but what the fuck? That's not, that's <laughs> in- not entirely what? surprising. Because it's I, a different it just market. It seems so weird to well, me. It just different... seems so weird. It's a different market, you know? It's not touched. Like, you know, they, there's a lot of films that they probably have no fucking idea, um, you know, what goes on in, like, Western media. So when you've got, like, people who watch these types of films, especially American films, they can, like, sort of adapt it and bring it over to, you know, their own country and sort of remake it into their own thing. Like there's loads of things that are just remakes on. I think they got the rights to it real cheap because it's probably a terrible film. Yeah, I won't, <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me at all. But there's loads of things that are just like based on a book, based on a uh, you know an older film. It's a remake of a remake of a remake of an adaptation of a screenplay of a play. Oh, so that doesn't surprise me. Um, okay, right budget fifteen million. And box office was forty point five million. So it did just fine. Yeah, it's, and that's just North America box office. Mm. Um, yeah, so pretty. I don't know if it was released anywhere else. Um, I wish it won. Wish it won. Should have kept it to themselves. Really, <laughs> shouldn't have released it um, at all. I I. Did we ask if Booth had any trouble identifying who the killer was at the end? Because she famously has face <laughs> I did. did. I literally even... did. I was like, who the fuck is that? And I was like, brown hair. Right, it's got to be Jack then. Mm. I did rewind it and pause it to be sure, because it was very briefly, it's so briefly on screen and it's dark and it's at a weird angle. You see most of his chin more than anything else. Do you know, it turns out I've got very face weird. blindness in real life as well. Uh, yeah. I was playing Baldur's Gate, and I was like, "Oh, he reminds me of my friend." And then, and then I went back and I like compared a picture. I was like, "It doesn't look anything like him, really." <laughs> oh my god! Well, that's just your brain. You got a special brain, Sophie. Ooh, I got the brain. She got a brain. I got the brain. She did got the brain. Should we cut? Should we? Should we wrap up this? Mm-hmm. Absolute- Will this? Will this make a good video game? We've got to oh. ask that. No. No! I put down, it would be great as like a cross between Barbie Horse Adventures World oh. Horse Rescue combined with Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Oh my god, I love the Barbie horse riding adventure. <laughs> oh my god. I That was my That's jam. That's the foreplay. Oh! <laughs> I love that game! Oh my god, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch have to stream a... it sometime. Yeah, I'm gonna look at a video later. Oh my god, memory unlocked. Okay, well that's it. We're done with the film. It's I'm over. done. I'm done with it. Let's now roll some dice. It's time to roll the dice. Wait, wait. Jagged Edge has been removed from your list. However, this is your second film in a row. Have I you am, replaced it yet? I am locked or... out. Uh, I have my my second list, so I will replace it with Jaws. Okay. Oh my, oh my god, okay, Jaws. Sure. Yeah. That's a, that's a solid film. It's a solid fucking film. Why okay. do you sound so fucking surprised? Well, I'm... I'm I felt like I had to say something because Sophie was just like, oh. No. Yeah, Sophie doesn't okay. seem too enthused. Um, I'm fine no. with Jaws. It's a film. 
I think you'll I think you'll enjoy it a lot more. <laughs> I will than, enjoy it a lot more. Think. I mean, I've you'll I enjoy can't it a lot more. The last time I've seen it, yeah, um, it'll be an yeah. experience to say the least. I know um, people love it, so it'll be interesting. It's one of those that gets churned out as a, as like a thing, like like. 80s movies now, they've got this nostalgia trip going on where they're like, okay, so we've got the license to do loads of merchandise around things now so that people buy it up. Like that and Gremlins and fucking Halloween and Jurassic <laughs> Park's still going. And Jurassic Park. Well, Jaws isn't, which is surprising, but they keep making shitty, like, movies about animals that go fucking ballistic, like there's some sort of sentient... Yeah, but w- you know. what I mean is that you can see some, you find so much merch that's still got Jaws, Jaws merch around mm. because because old older people will buy it. Mm. Yeah, the whole animal thing, the shark thing, Sharknado, Ghost Shark, the yeah. Meg, the Meg. Let's roll some dice. Um, should we refresh what our lists are? My list. Is My Fair Lady, Heather's, The Brood, Hill Killed, Captain Alex, Krull, North by Northwest. G's list, doesn't matter. Um, but it's <laughs> The that. Fly, Raiders of Lost Ark, Sea of Love, Jaws, Great Gatsby, or just Gatsby, and They Live. Um, Booth's list, this is important because it's, hopefully it's going to be her this week. She deserves it. <laughs> Labyrinth, The Hidden, An Evening with Beverly Loughlin, Pass Through, oh Christ. Kung Pao and Cemetery Man. Mm. Um, so I'm very it'll be happy just between that. me and Booth because G's had two Lara weeks. Croft and Jagged Edge. He's two had in a row. too much fun recently. He's had too fun. much, way too much fun. <laughs> way too much. Okay, right. So, Odd, Simon. No. We're going to go with uh, the list first. Yeah, yeah. What, yeah, what yeah, position yeah. on the list first? Right. Let's see what we got. We got a four, oh, which oh, means pass through, pass through, or he'll ki- who killed Captain Alex? Is it, this Two week is going to be objectively bad film. Incredible. <laughs> who killed Captain Alex or pass through? Okay. Oh god. So if it's an if it's an odd, it's me. Even it's Simon. Are we going to stick with this? Yeah. Yeah. We got to abide by the rules of the dice. We're going to watch who killed Captain Alex. Yeah. Christ on a fucking bike. Okay, well, at least it's short. And yes. And the plot is nonsense. Yeah. So, G? <laughs> G, are you okay? You're being very quiet. She's just G? happy it's not, it's not uh, Neil Breen. That is it, I don't, yeah. I don't know how it, I feel. <laughs> she's thrilled. At she least it's not Neil thrilled. Breen. But it is... Oh, but it's still on the, <laughs> the list, so it's going to get it's picked It's Uganda's eventually. first action movie we're going to be watching. Um, a lot of memes were birthed from this movie. Yeah. So you'll be like pointing at the TV and going, I know that, I, know that, I recognise that. It's got incredible effects. DiCaprio point. Actually, insane effects. Um, the, whole, the whole film is up on YouTube on their official channel. Yeah. So... It's free for everyone to watch. Um, so we don't even it? have to spend money. That's a fucking uh, amazing. Hooray! It is one hour, eight minutes, 34 seconds. Oh, oh okay. Fair enough. Not a nice thought. Now, Filmous. just bear in mind, um, African films, it's not uncommon for them to have a, a video jockey type guy commentating on the movie as you're watching it. So don't be confused by a man making little snide comments as you're watching. That's just part of the film. Okay. Um, so, yeah. You can, I cannot believe we're going to have to watch this. Oh, God. Okay. This is doomed. I don't know, man. The dice are just not... Just, I know. What's what the going fuck? on? What is going on? We're just going to have to have like a month of booth films. I think we're just going to have to have an episode where mm. we just roll the dice on seven your, weeks. your list and just. It, has it really been seven weeks? Of... I'm pretty sure it's weeks. been a while. Dare Dreamer. Yeah. That, that banger, Dare that Dreamer. Banger. 
Oh my god! But just, if it okay. gets if it gets to that point, we're just gonna have to do a booth list roll because it's mm. getting ridiculous now. We'll see. We'll see. But yes, that is the pick of the week. Who killed Captain Alex? For anyone who may have missed the announcement, that is the movie for next week. So watch it, and hopefully you can catch the episode as it's releasing. If Sometimes you wanna... she starts talking, and I'm not sure that she knows what word she's going to say next. <laughs> like it, it's all just happening. You G- can't G's call not in control. someone out. G's not you can't in control call of the someone out like this. You're doing great, honey. You're doing great, G. Don't just ignore her. Just ignore her. <laughs> Cry into my coffee. Um, if you want to support us over on the Patreon, it is uh, Yomcast. No, sorry, Patreon.com forward slash Yomcast. And uh, there is a, there is a bonus episode out already, which is very cool. And hopefully, the next one should be along shortly. We've recently posted some cute little cat photos as well so if you guys want to check those out you get to see the the cats of yomp and the cats of yomp the cats of yomp and they are beautiful and adorable and precious and uh yeah we do special little shout outs at the end of every episode as well as a special thanks to anyone uh of our uh, producers uh you know for yomp just as a just as a thank you for supporting us but this has been another episode of Yomp. We hope you enjoyed uh, this episode and hopefully the movie, even if we weren't that. You're doing great, honey. You're doing great. I hate you. You know what? I'm, I'm going to stop talking now. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Oh, God. I'm sorry, G. Poor G Star Games. Hey, everyone. It's G. Thank you so much to our Giga Yompers over on the Patreon for supporting us. We appreciate you all so much. Uh, but special shout out, like I said, to the Giga Yompers. Thank you, Native Blood, Lawrence Thibodeau, Enki13, Sleepy DIJ, Scott5877, Luck33, I'm a Robot, Cornelius Vander, and Kyle. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this week's episode and we look forward to catching you guys next time. Bye.